What's up guys, it's Uncle Freedom coming to you on what is not actually a glorious day off. I go to work tonight, but I figured we'd do a quick video to talk about one of the most often not talked about parts of your everyday carry, especially if you carry a firearm. So guys, if that sounds like fun for you today, go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend because the channel is growing really fast. And for that, I do thank you and I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to what we're going to do to come. So what is that piece of equipment that we talk, that never gets talked about that is super important to everything that we do in everyday carry? Well, it holds your pants up and it's called your belt. This becomes very important if you carry a firearm. Firearms are heavy, they're cumbersome, and they will drag your pants down. And one of the most overlooked parts of carrying a firearm every day is a consistent platform from which you draw. We spend a lot of money decking out carry guns. We spend a ton of money getting the right holster and having all the coolest, gucciest gear. And then we put it on a really parable belt that when we actually draw the gun, the holster moves and shifts inside of our pants and we don't get a clean draw where we could be. So I figured we'd look at just a couple of options today for my favorite belts that I run. Lots of guys run different kinds of belts. Your standard belt you buy from Walmart is not going to cut it for the actual carrying of stuff. Your Dickies belt, I'm sorry, it may be comfortable, but it's not going to actually do what you need it to, at least not in the most efficient fashion. This is to say that just because I say I wouldn't run it doesn't mean it won't work. Just because things work don't mean they work as well as they could, and that's where picking the right belt platform in order for you to have the most stable carry is what's important. Here's an example of a belt. A belt that a lot of people run. This is a standard riggers style belt. It's very flexible. The issue you're going to have with a belt like this is firearms are heavy. And what ends up happening is they sag inside of your pants. And when you draw, the belt runs up and it actually doesn't provide you the most consistent draw you could have. For a lot of people, that could be a four o'clock holster, whether that is something like an outside the waistband, if you're into that kind of stuff, or something like an appendix rig that goes inside of the waistband. The outside of the waistband stuff, what you'll notice a lot of the times with a belt is you will feel it digging or it'll sag your pants down on one side, which actually creates some pretty nasty pressure spots on your hips, can cause some hip problems and pain you don't want to deal with. Here, one of the issues you're going to run into is if you lean forward or move, this will shift and move with inside of your pants, which causes different problems. And I personally don't like things that are pointed at my junk to move unless I want them to move. So super important for me. Now this can run the gamut. You can do, you know, the good old standard leather belt. And while leather belts do work, Hanks is a great example of this, and they look classier, and this may be the option you have to go with if you are dressed in a nicer fashion, but a good gun belt's gonna be very thick. Very, very thick. Now this is an area where you can run into problems depending on your holster and something to keep in mind. I like having a good leather belt to run something like four o'clock carry or when I'm doing a, a safari land holster that's outside the waistband and maybe I need to look nicer and I have on a suit jacket or something, a leather belt's gonna be my option for that. But what you need to keep in mind is the thickness of your leather belt. Once we start moving into gun belts that are gonna be designed to carry a concealed carry firearm on a daily basis, they're thick. They're thick and they're stiff. And while leather will break in over time, it will also need to be replaced more frequently and you can run into the issue that the clips will actually not seat all the way around it because the thickness of the belt is so much. Um, that said, leather's an excellent option. Just be sure you buy it from a reputable manufacturer like Hanks or somebody because that is going to make the best difference in your carry. Now if we move on to an option that a lot of us use, and I still run this one from time to time. This is a 511 belt. This is a standard 511 Rickers belt. But unlike... This other standard riggers belt here that is very floppy and flexible, this riggers belt is very stiff. This guy is actually two layers of scuba webbing in here. This is very stiff, very rigid, and makes an excellent platform to carry my firearm on a day-to-day -day basis. I still get very, very good retention when my clips are across here. I don't tend to run into issues, and this is just a standard 511 riggers belt decent option if that's what you're going for but it's not my favorite and typically not one i will run now on to one that everybody knows and loves and talks about and i do think this belt serves a purpose something along the lines of a next belt which are going to have a ratcheting function in here so that you can get a much better fit to your platform it's got a little lever here on the bottom you just lift it up 
and you can expand it. So if you've had a little too much food to eat and you're sitting at the table, you can pop that bitch back about two notches and actually give yourself the ability to not feel like you're being suffocated by your belt. This whole deal functions on this ratchet platform in the back, which is really cool. And I will say I have not had a ton of issues with it being unstable. The next belts, as long as you have one with the EDC rated buckle, these are actually fairly stiff for what they are. They form as a good platform for your concealed carry, though still not the best option. But I will say, if we were talking about having something that was slightly more classy, this is definitely more classy to have on than a riggers belt. So depending on your environment, what you need to wear, you can also get this exact belt in leather. So it's an option for those of you that need to be dressed up nicer than some of us that don't. But these aren't too bad, and these are the next belts. I think Core Essentials is kind of done the same way. But you can see it's got a little more flex to it, but it's still relatively stiff for a belt. But it also is very, very comfortable. Now we'll look at my two favorite belts. These belts are usually on me no matter what. I wear one of the two. The first one is from Blue Alpha. This is the Blue Alpha Low Profile EDC belt. This belt is incredibly rigid but not so rigid that it's uncomfortable i have the same two layers of scuba webbing these are made in the usa and when you buy these you actually don't buy them based on like your total inches around the waist you order these according to your pant size there's enough movement inside of this belt that even running an appendix rig if you wear a 36 size pant you order a 36 size belt you will still be able to actually carry it one of the other things i like about this belt is because of its low profile nature You'll see here where we're actually going through the buckle. It's one single piece of scuba webbing, so I have that flexibility, and it's not super stiff. But what I like about this is once I get it on, I have a very slim profile in the front of the belt, which is excellent if you are running something like an appendix rig. Because you don't have, those of you that have ever run appendix rig have probably run into this with a belt like the next belt. These are super comfortable and awesome, but you have to offset the buckle because you need this part of the belt to carry your firearm because you can't have this flap in between the front of your two buckles for appendix. So if we're mounting this here, it ends up causing me an issue. So it ends up being offset to here and I run it this way when I'm actually trying to run the belt. But this is kind of painful because it sits right into your hip flexor joint and it actually pinches. This eliminates that. And for those of you that run a two-piece belt for duty or for competition or what have you, this belt with an outer loop ring around it is actually the low-profile inner belt from Blue Alpha Company and comes standard with their Battle Belt White. And i got to be honest with you, this is one of the best inner belts I've ever run. It's not a single one-wrap inner belt where you just overdo the two. I can actually set this. I can have this put this on, and I can tighten it up as I need to or loosen it back to get a perfect fit for my inner belt. But this is the Blue Alpha Belts Low Profile EDC Belt. This guy's in wolf gray. Highly recommend these, especially if you need a low profile option for mounting this. And maybe you need to be able to adjust it from day to day. That said, my favorite belt and the one I have on 9 times out of 10 is also a Blue Alpha. This is the Blue Alpha Hybrid EDC Belt. I have a very small 1.5 inch Cobra buckle here. You actually have to feed this on backwards when you put your belts on unless you've got very wide pant loops. But it will feed through standard jeans like Wranglers. It'll feed through those. You can actually put it on just instead of putting it around your belt from your left to your right, you would actually put it on using the end of the buckle from your right to your left. What I love about this belt is I have that same awesome double layer of scuba webbing that is reinforced and stitched all the way around. It is very stiff to support a firearm, but it is not so stiff that it is uncomfortable. It is USA made, and they have the best customer service in the market. I'm telling you right now, they just do. Uh, I would tell you that Blue Alpha does not know who I am, but they do know who I am. I will be working with them on some things coming up. But I bought this long before they knew me, and I still think it's the best thing out there for EDC use. You get an actual real Austrian Alpine Cobra buckle, which is fan-freaking-tastic. And your adjustment on this guy is done on your right side. So through the larger part of the buckle, get your fit, set it, and forget it. What I like about this is I have a very consistent fit day to day. 
The best part of this though for me is I can still wear this completely center line because the way this buckle is actually set up, when I put on my holster, my holster rides on either side of that buckle, perfectly center lined. I don't have to worry about it sliding because the buckle is there. I have never had an issue with this thing not fitting correctly. I have also never had an issue with this belt sliding. I've never had a problem with it not being perfectly secure. And when we start talking about the game of concealed carry and drawing a firearm, consistency is everything, especially on that draw stroke, knowing that when you defeat your garment, you come down, you're getting the exact same placement. It's not gonna be a little over here or canned up or canned down. So consistency is the key. And for me, my number one, my favorite belt is the Blue Alpha Hybrid EDC, followed very closely by the Blue Alpha Low Profile. Again, not a sponsored ad by them, guys. These are just that good. I highly recommend them. They're USA made out of Georgia. They have the best customer service in the market as far as these things go. The simple sizing, just buy your normal pant size. The belt's going to fit. If you have an issue and you order the wrong size, they will get you taken care of. I did it with this belt, actually. Wasn't paying attention and ordered the wrong size. Called them and told them what I did. They had a new belt out to me within a day in the correct size with a prepaid envelope to send back the one that I screwed up ordering. I don't know about you, but that sounds like pretty good customer service to me. So guys, there we go. There's a quick look at one of the most overlooked pieces of EDC kit we have, and that is the belt we use to hold our pants up and the gun where it's supposed to be, because like every good American, you should be carrying. So guys, I'm Uncle Freedom. Like and subscribe. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. And until next time, I'll see you later.